truly God bless America. Um, next we have uh, Pastor Rex Walker, who is the pastor of the East, El East Elkin Baptist Church with us. And I've got to tell you a short story. It's not coincidence that he's here with us today. I did not know Brother Rex Walker. I had never met, I had never even heard of Brother Rex Walker, although our church had talked about an event that he was involved in a few months ago, and I had wanted to go but didn't get to. Um, I was trying to call a client. I picked up my phone one morning and was trying to call a client, and this gentleman answered the phone, and I asked if he was the person I was calling, and he said, no, this is Brother Rex Walker. And I told him who I was trying to reach and why I was calling. And he said, well, I know the gentleman you're trying to reach, but I'm his pastor. And it was a God connection. I have no idea how I got him, how I got his number, but God connected us because he was supposed to be here today. And as I've told you, he is the pastor of East Elkin Baptist Church. He is the vice president of the Piedmont College of Theology. He is on the board of directors of Peace for Israel, Incorporated. He is the co-founder of Fusion Ministries, and he is a land surveyor by profession. He says part of his calling is the outreach to Israel, to the Israeli people, and to teach Hebrew and the Hebraicness of the Bible. So please give a warm welcome, because God intended him to be here today, to Brother Rex Walker. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Are you still alive? We've heard enough good preaching. We can go home and say it's been excellent to be with the Lord. Amen. You know, um, I don't, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, my family and, and some of my church members being here today. And, and it is not coincidence. I tell my church all the time and I come to you with this thought in mind I come to you in, in great love but it's not my job to come here to be here to be popular today it's my job to be effective and as I told them yesterday what I had to say if it's my last Sunday so be it Pew polls tell us today that nine out of ten church members, evangelical churches, they want their pastor to tell them how to apply their Bible to the issues that are going on around them. St. Pupils tell us that only one out of ten pastors are willing to tell it because they're either afraid of the deacons, afraid of some of the church members, or they're afraid of the government. God help me if I ever not say what God wants me to say. This is where we are today, and this is out of the book of Isaiah. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Those words were written approximately 2,700 years ago, but they are as applicable as they could be written in the New York Times today. Amen. Never in our life have you ever seen the time has been mentioned some of these other fine pastors, like Mark said, on where we need to go to the bathroom. Now they're tweeting that you don't even need to say to your dog whether he's a he or a she. Well, I promise you that's news to the dog. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the power from on high. We thank you for the unction. God, we pray that the Holy Spirit would come down and be in our presence today, that you would fill us with your word to say nothing more, nothing less. It be pleasing to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. I remember standing in Caesarea Philippi just a few years ago, well, a couple years ago, and I remember looking at the gates of hell. That is a real place. And I don't know about you, but I, our country, 
I've never seen gates have wheels or a motor or a machine and they don't run down and chase people. That tells us when Jesus told us that we need to attack the gate. We sat too long on our hindquarters and we've been pacifists way too long and we've let them dictate to us what should be done. And I'm telling you, I tell you this out of love and because we love people. And it's not because of any hate or who we're against. But there are souls on the line. There are people in danger of hell today. God help us today. I'm telling you right now, the world hates us and the world hates Israel. I have noticed two things in life. How you stand on abortion and how you stand on the Second Amendment tells me everything how you view your God and your country. And I have learned that your depth of Scripture and knowledge depends on how in tune you are with Israel, how much you love Israel, and how much that you understand that she is a center of all prophecy. Most people don't realize the devil wants to kill all of them because if he does, it'll make the Bible a lie. We were getting together our event to honor Israel. And our leadership team, it was a big event. We only had three weeks to put it together. And I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning, 3.30, many mornings, and praying, God, we need your help. I can't do this without you. We need you. We need this event. And it was amazing how it came together. And all of us at the same time, we read the verse that we put on the front. And it says, I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse him that curseth thee. And I began to see that, and it broke us down, and we saw that the blessing comes blessed. It's them. It comes corporately like to America. When we bless Israel, we'll be blessed. And it says, and I will curse him that curseth thee. When you curse Israel, it's personal against you. Most people don't want to preach that day. Most people don't want to hear that today. But I'm telling you today how we treat Israel, it means everything. I don't know about you, but I get a little bit sideways sometimes, and you can tell your neighbor this is going to get a little rough right here, and this is going to be very unpopular. But I have a problem with a group of people coming and waving their flag on their Independence Day and talking trash about my country. Amen. Now, I was invited by the Israelis and the Israeli government to do their Independence Day celebration this year and have spent a lot of time traveling. And down in Miami, when we stood up, there were 10,000 people there. Do you know which national anthem they played first? They played our national anthem first, then their national anthem, and then when two airplanes flew by, it had the American flag first, and then their flag second. You have no idea how much these people love us, and how much concerned they are, and how much that they love us. Just in the last month, I have set, I have spoken to the retired, recently retired. If you know anything about the military and you know anything that's going on, Benny Gantz is the last major general, the chief of defense of all of Israel, just retired last year. I had lunch with Major General Amnon Reshev and another general just in a few weeks' time. You have no idea how much respect and how much they love us and how much they support us even more than some of our own countrymen. They're worried about us. And they, I went to the synagogue and I heard him speak and it sounded just like Jesus. Love your enemy. You have to do what you've got to do, but you've got to love your enemy. We do this out of love and not of hate. Why support Israel? Because we know that they're our friends and they support us and they're the only true, true fan we have in the world. Look, I don't know about you, but I support what God supports. I support what God supports. And the thing of it is today, you read your Bible, God supports them. God prophesied thousands of years ago that He would bring them back as a nation again. And I support that. No true words that could be said today. And like Dr. Beatty and many of these that spoke today, my calling too is, is to revolutionary war history time and how that God wrought all of that. And how I study the Second Temple first century Judaism. 
This was written by Thomas Paine, December 23rd, 1776. You can say that this was written today. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the summer and the sunshine patriot will shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands by it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny like hell is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. While we obtain too cheap, we, abstain, we, abstain, we esteem too lightly. Is it dearness only that gives everything its value? Heaven knows how to put a proper price upon its goods, and it would be strange indeed if so celestial article as freedom should not be highly rated. <clears throat> 241 years ago, and his name's been mentioned before, St. John's Church, March 20th. 1775, Patrick Henry. The two things that God began to show me yesterday morning before I even mentioned this in my, in my sermon is this. Men of the Bible speak like the Bible. Somebody that, people that love God's Word, when you talk to them, they sound like God's Word, amen? And you know that they're trying to sell us at our that our leaders were flawed and that they're bad and all of that because of this and that and what and the other. All men are flawed except for Jesus Christ. Now, if you don't want to learn anything from a flawed person or don't think anybody can do anything that's been flawed, then you grab your Bible back here around the first part and where it's got Moses in there, you rip it out. And if you don't believe that flawed people can serve God and do the right thing, you grab it around in there where David is and you just rip it out of your Bible. I believe that this is the Word of God and that we have to stand on the Word of God and it's good from the, from the cradle to the grave. I've had people tell me, well, you know business is business and friendship is friends and church is church. If I can't live my life the way the Bible says outside the church doors, then it's good for nothing for me. Amen. That's not popular today, is it? What we have is because of Jesus, because of what He done. I'm telling you today, I'm so concerned about my nation and I just want to scream amen real loud to what everybody said today. If we don't take a hold of what's going on today, there will not be a generation to enjoy this country after this one. Oh my goodness. Patrick Henry stands up. He says, If we wish to be free, if we mean to preserve inviolate these inestimable privileges for which we have begun so contending, if we mean not basely to abandon the noble struggle which has so long engaged, and he continues on and he talks about the wars already started. Let me tell you something. A lot of people may not want war, but sometimes war chooses you, and evil has come to our country and has chose us. And if we don't stand up for the right thing and for the principal thing, we will not make it. Amen. Again, I want to remind you, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We need to know who our enemy is. Sure, we need to stand against ISIS and these lies of these other religions and stuff. I've spent a lot of time studying and know about Islam, and I want to tell you two things about that. There's a thing called takira in Islam. They can lie to you, tell you, be sweet to you, and it does not count against them as a sin in their religion. Because as long as it furthers the kingdom of Muhammad, it's all right. Now, when you hear everybody stand on the news and they say it's a peaceful religion, 
Well, believe it or not, they're telling you a part truth, but that's what the news media does every day, isn't it? It's a part truth. The first of the book was Book of Peace, but the last part of the book is a book of war. And they have a doctrine that says whatever's written last supersedes what's first. Please don't ever forget that. Please don't ever forget that. It's up to us. We're the generation that's going to do this. Patrick Henry said, bad men cannot make good citizens. It's when a people forget God that tyrants forge their chains. He was so passionate when he gave the speech. For, he says, give me liberty or give me death. He said, give me liberty. And stuck it like a dagger in his heart and said, or give me death. They were all in. They were all in. They cast their fame, their fortune, whatever, in their very own lives. We are not going to be inconvenienced for God much anymore. Look, I, I just want to share a few things with you, and I'm trying to be sensitive to time here. This is my favorite quote from the Revolutionary Time. It cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians. Not on religions, but upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. My insurance agent called me a few years ago, back in about the <clears throat> seven year ago election, and he's, we need a man, we need a man, we need a leader, we need a leader, we need somebody to stand up. We need, who is the leader we need? He'd get depressed and he'd always call me. I said, Danny, you're looking at this wrong. It's not from the top down, it's from the bottom up. Right here it is. If my people, that's us. If you've been born again by the blood of Christ, that's us. If we, which are called by my, by my name, he says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall what? Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will, what does that say? Heal their land. Look, my son's standing over here to the side. And he's, we got a brochure that looks like this. And I'm closing. We need help getting this brochure out again. And I'm not ashamed to tell you, we need money, just like she needs money. I believe in putting my money where my mouth is, amen? amen. And we've got to print this again, but you understand, this one's in Hebrew. We got this into Netanyahu's hands, all their senators and their Jewish mayors before I left Israel the last time. And then the Gaza war broke out about a week or two later. This talks about the blood moons in it. This talks about, there's a scientific study that every time, every time, that we have tried to get Israel to give up land or help them give up land. We've been hit with a major storm in America. President Obama stands up and says we need to go back to the 67 borders. And then again, three days later, Joplin, Missouri does not exist on the face of the earth again. Now, I don't know if God did that or had anything to do with it. We can have a debate over that, but I'll give you some redneckology. If there's this black box and it's got this red button on it, and every time I press that button, this hand comes out and it smacks me upside the head. How many times am I going to mash that button? I figure out there's a correlation between me doing that action and my head getting slapped. All top ten of the highest insurance claims ever in America for natural disaster are all around that one event. I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse him that curseth you. We need to get our head wrapped around that. Now, he also has some of my cards. It ain't about me, but it has my website on there. If you can't help out, or he runs out of the brochures out of there, she wanted me to mention this. You can see our thing that we do to honor Israel, but you go to where it says he's coming soon at the top, and you can have you a free... PDF copy of that brochure right there. I'm telling you, it's blessed us. My horn's going off and says I'm done. Take it. Use it. Use it as a witnessing tool. I do it all the time. If you're a church, and I'm telling you right now, prophecy has come together. These Israelis are telling me to help them. They want to reach out to churches and they want to have a meeting with churches every three months. This is unheard of 
This is part of prophecy. When they know, when they see Jesus come back at the second coming and they recognize for who He is, how do they know who He is unless somebody told them? Amen. Bible says you can't get saved unless you've been told with the Word of God. Amen. Let me tell you my dream, and I'm closing on this. My dream and my vision is for all of you to be a mighty force, whether times are good or times are bad, in your home, your church, your community, and in your country. A praying and witnessing, loving people that will go forth deeply rooted and grounded in the Word of God, never yielding to any of the forces of either evil, whether it be local or foreign, physical or spiritual. I call on you today, let us therefore bind together as brothers and sisters in Christ under the banner of the El Shaddai, the Almighty God, in spirit and truth and in love, making a commitment to our Lord and Savior to each other that we'll lay down our differences, pick up the blood of Christ and join arms to fight this evil that's taken over our land. Let's get close to Him. Let's get close to each other. Let's follow His commandments. Study His Word. Pray without ceasing as one body for the Lord for one cause. If you're close to somebody, grab them by the hand. Quickly, quickly. They need to move on. There's more people after more important than me. Quickly. All right, let's bow together. Two or more touching and agreeing. God, we thank you for this day. Thank you, God, so much for Sister Lynn to having the passion to do this. Lord, we come to you in a mighty way under the banner of the Holy Spirit by the blood stain that's on it, dear God. Lord, that you would reach out, you would touch each soul here. God, I pray that there'd be disciples that live, they leave here, dear God, that they would touch many and make disciples of others. Thank you, God, for the cross of Calvary. Thank you for sending your Son. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ coming into our lives. For it's the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus and Messiah, we do pray and let all the people say...